most of the people, when you hear visa, you're like, oh my God, I feel like visa in USA, you need to go to interviews, then wait <laughs> yes. for it like this. No, 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 you need visa, but you go pay cash straight away, boom, here you go. Welcome to Sierra Leone. Hello everyone, Ian, thanks so much for joining us. Welcome to the podcast. This is something new that I'm trying. I'm implementing, I'm, I'm including our live audience here in the new podcast episodes. It's good to have some interaction. How are you doing, Ian? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Uh, Ian, I'm, I'm very excited because we're going to be talking about a country that I'm not sure if I'm going to visit. I've never been to, uh, but I don't know much about as well. Um, but before we get there, can you tell us something about yourself? Because as like most of my guests, I never met you. I actually, before we started communicating, I didn't know anything about you. I mean, I don't know much about you now as well. Can you introduce yourself <laughs> with a few sentences to me and to my guests, uh, my, my audience, sorry? Sure, okay. So I'm a, a full-time freelance travel writer, uh, adventurer and speaker. So I dedicate my time mainly to uh, Africa and those little bits of Africa like Sierra Leone that um, potentially have these bountiful places to visit but aren't on the usual uh, radar um, of you know of, of your everyday travel company and just to try and dispel some of the ideas that Africa is this dark and terrible place where you're going to get mugged as soon as you set foot off the airplane. That is indeed the picture that is projected in most of us. Uh, I have been to Uganda it was thanks to a travel gig that I did and you know, I was filming there for a week it was really great um, but why Africa for you and why Sierra Leone? The, the why Africa is something that's really uh, difficult to answer I think I just love the possibilities of Africa and that sort of contrast between what you do expect of say going somewhere like Sierra Leone and then what you actually experience on the ground and I can't deny there's lots of uh, poverty as you probably experienced in Uganda but there is also this great uh, sort of joy of life and people don't worry about those little things they they're they're just happy you know they wake up in the morning uh, and the sun is shining and therefore it's a good day and that is uh, something that we kind of lose in in the western world I I'm based in London um, with all this little trivialities of life perhaps that is true i agree i always say to people we just lack perspective people here complain because they didn't get enough cream in their coffee while there are other people in the world that they need to walk four miles just to grab clean water um and i always i always say people that are you know down I'm just like just 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 book a trip but don't go don't book it to the Bahamas or to Paris just book it somewhere in Africa you know have a different point of view uh, and you see how good your life actually is and when I went to Africa I I had this mindset that I'm that I, I have it good I have it good um, and I thought that it wouldn't be very drastic for me to Africa but it's still you feel something because you see you see how other people live and it's, 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 I don't know, it's, it's a whole new experience. Um, so you say you're based in London. Where are you from? So I was born and brought up in London. So I've really not ah. moved uh, very far in my life. <laughs> All right. Which, which part? So uh, South London, place called Croydon. Croydon, ah, east or west? It's kind of immediately south of central London. No, no, no. They, because there are two corners. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, East Croydon Station's about, I don't know, five minutes from, ah, from where I am. All right. Okay. I, well, it's a, it's a nice area, I think. I mean, Croydon was... A well, big... I don't know about that, but it's good for the airport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially if you travel a lot, you can just one hop yeah. away. One hop away. All right, great. Um, well, let's dive in instead. That was a great introduction, you know, of you. Uh, let's dive in Sierra Leone. Um, before that, when was your first trip over there? And then how often you're going there? Sierra Leone specifically? Sorry? Yes, Sierra, Sierra, Leone. Sierra Leone. specifically. Yes. yes. So my last trip was a five-month trip there in 2016 over to 2017. 
and I'd been there uh, one time before that on a sort of a shorter two week uh, longer journey across West Africa. Okay, 20, 2016. All right. So for people who want to go there, I mean, I don't know how is it entering there. When I went to Uganda, you need a visa, but you pay cash for the visa straight away on the border. And here you go. Welcome to Uganda. That, that was it. Um, are, are there any restrictions entering Sierra Leone? Like what, what is happening? Can we just go like that? It's getting easier and easier, actually, uh, with more and more sort of normal airlines uh, flying there. You do need a visa, but you can um, buy it online. So you do it online before you go. Just print out your visa, show it at the customs um, booth at the airport, and, and you know you're in five minutes you're through without any problems. I've done that both times, once overland and once at the airport, and I didn't have a problem doing it that way. Yeah, it's a good thing to mention. It's a different type of visa because, you know, it, it straight away pay, here you go. Wow, if, if most of people, when you hear visa, you're like, oh my God, I feel like visa in USA, you need to go to interviews, then wait <laughs> yes. for it like this. No, no, no. You need visa, but you go pay cash straight away. Boom, here you go. Welcome to Sierra Leone. Um, exactly, okay, yeah. so Sierra Leone is uh, in the West part of uh, Africa. What would you say we can we can visit over there? when we get there well i mean most of the the sort of standard tourist sort of um attractions actually lie along the atlantic coast um so freetown itself is really interesting because it's um so anyone who doesn't know sierra leone and particularly freetown was set up as a place to return freed transatlantic slaves to the african continent uh, which is why it's called Freetown. So it's got lots of um, sort of little but really important attractions from that uh, period, which was sort of the late 1700s and then the early 1800s. Um, and that's really where Sierra Leone grew as a country, um, became a British colony after that. So there's, so, so there's an interesting sort of um, ancient courthouse, there's the cotton tree, which is supposed to have been there since the very beginning. Um, this area called the Portuguese Steps, which is what's supposedly where the uh, slaves stepped ashore. So there's lots of history in Freetown. And then you head down the Freetown Peninsula, there's these amazing uh, beaches dotted all along. Some are white sand, some are orange. There's a couple of black sand beaches. And then you keep going along. You hit one of my favorite places, uh, which is the Banana Islands. And then you keep going on from there, you hit the Turtle Islands, which are these um, islands which are kind of in the middle of nowhere, very traditional, authentic way of life that really hasn't changed very much for years and years. Okay, so it's not just the coastline, but you have a few islands that you can, you know, quickly go with a boat. From yeah, yeah. So the, uh, the Banana Islands is about a two hour drive from Freetown to a town called Kent. And then it's about a 20 minute boat ride to the islands themselves. Okay. And then they're, they're, they're quite small, aren't they? You can easily. Yeah, they're um, really small. There's a population of about 200 people. Wow. And they're probably, I think they're eight kilometers long um sort of a long thin kind of banana shaped which i think is where they get their name mm -hmm. from um with basically one small town at one end and then one town at the other end with nothing but jungle with monkeys and monitor lizards and, and little coves where you can swim in between does everybody knows you on the banana islands yeah yeah definitely <laughs> i mean yeah it is one of those places where every Every family knows everyone else. They're all intricately linked. So basically, whatever the color of your skin, they're going to know you're, you're a foreigner and they're going to uh -huh. welcome you and, and make sure you have a good time on their island. OK, so they're friendly, friendly bunch of oh, people. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, what about this cotton tree? You briefly mentioned it and I put your Google. It's a massive tree in what it looks like in the middle of the city. Um, yeah, so that's exactly it. Um, Cotton trees are really important in Sierra Leonean culture because that's kind of where communities would gather together in the original 
you know when you were still small groups of people in the middle of nowhere that's where you would gather and, and have your tribal meetings and what have you so this cotton tree sits right in the middle of downtown uh, freetown mm -hmm. it's uh, got bats hanging from it roosting it's right next to the national museum and it's kind of the heart of the city and it's supposed to have been there from um the very earliest days and they supposedly they decided to base freetown where they did because of the presence of this cotton tree there okay so when you go there to that, that's that's really interesting because it's it's so nice you, you don't see much of a green well you see some some trees but it's a lot of buildings and you see this massive tree just in the middle of yeah. a roundabout it's, it's absolutely it's in the middle of a roundabout um right in the center of town with all the sort of government buildings and the tele telecoms offices uh and all of that sort of thing and there are some little parks uh dotted around freetown but obviously they've got better things to be worrying about than uh keeping parks nice and clean so but there is this cotton tree that is mm. basically you know w all roads kind of lead to this cotton tree <laughs> that's that's not I, I just remember like all roads lead to rome that's uh yeah exactly in a, bit, the same in a bit different in sierra leone <laughs> okay so when you get there then what do you do do you just uh, go to a different place every time to take pictures or like what do you do when you get there so i just kind of i don't know how to say it other than i could just kind of roam around and um <laughs> uh, look at a map see where where might be interesting uh, where you know might be slightly off the beaten path and just head off there sometimes i have the most boring time of my life other mm. times i discover these amazing things that maybe people you know don't normally see on, on trips like these well that's what happens when you go off the beaten track you don't know what you're gonna find you know sometimes it's gonna be you know jungle for miles but then sometimes you're gonna find a nice waterfall over there so what are the exactly. what are the two places that are really really lovely in your mind and you would love to go back again and again in Sierra Leone? So the first is probably uh, the Turtle Islands, which are even smaller than the Banana Islands, smaller. much further <laughs> okay. away. Um, they're kind of if you imagine that quintessential idea of a tropical deserted tropical island um that is the turtle islands these tiny sort of sandbars with a few trees these communities isolated from the rest of sierra leone there's no police there's no electricity um they lead really simple lives just fishing doing a little bit of trade with passing boats and it, as i say it's just that kind of idea of almost the getting there is is the fun because you're traveling through basically the Atlantic Ocean you don't see anything else for hours you just have to trust that the guy who is sailing there um I think it took me something like four hours to get there and then you arrive to a very basic camp and it's just about experiencing this very very um natural authentic lifestyle that the people of the islands still lead wow so this one is not so close as the banana islands no you really need to reserve sort of a couple of days at least to be getting there exploring them because i, I don't know i think there's sort of seven or eight different islands they've all got their own little culture to them so you want to mm -hmm. see as many of them as you can um, they're all slightly different so you need to reserve two you know ideally three days to to get there and travel around and to to get to know these tiny communities of people who live there wow so so how does it work so you book a tour with somebody and then they provide you accommodation in those little villages over there when you get there so accommodation is is basically either a, a simple hut made of palm leaves or you can take a tent with you I mean, the weather's so warm in Probably. in the dry season, at least, that you don't need anything anyway. And then you just sort of set up your camp on on sort of a, a beach area. Uh -huh. You need to take everything with you from drinking water, food, toilet paper. Absolutely everything has to go with you. So you don't want to miss anything. Um, and then you just explore these really natural islands. 
How is the situation with drinking water when you went there? Because when I was going to Ghana, they told me don't drink in tap water. Yeah, so that's pretty much the same for all of Sierra Leone. Um, you can either get bottled water or you can get sort of sachets they sell. You probably saw it in Uganda as well. They sell water in like plastic bags, sealed plastic bags, which are really odd if you've never seen it before, but it, it's perfectly safe. Or, or, of course, you can do, which uh, I do quite a lot now, is I just filter my own uh, water. So you take the tap water, filter it in one of various different ways, and then it's safe to drink. How, how do you filter it? I'm really old school. I use iodine tincture. So yeah, a couple of drops of iodine. And basically, it makes it impossible for any bacteria or viruses to survive. When you said I'm old school, I thought you're boiling your water in a... <laughs> in a handmade fire you know you make your fire over there and then you just boil it <laughs> that's all right okay i'm not that old school <laughs> okay okay <laughs> okay so you said turtle islands can you give me one more place that you really enjoyed it like you can spend hours okay there? the other one i've never been there i've been desperate to go there <laughs> and in five months of being in sierra leone i still didn't make it but it's a, a national park far, right in the north of the country which makes it really difficult uh, to get to it's got a longer name but everyone knows it is okay uh national park okay um, <laughs> yeah it's a great name for a national park um it's right on the border the northern border of guinea and it's kind of you're not going to see a huge sort of um savannah safari type experiences but you can it's one of the only places in the world you can like canoe next to hippos and they allow you to do that and there are crocs and monkeys and possibilities of chimps so it's just sort of starting up as this destination so it's again a bit like turtle islands you basically need to take everything you need with you but the possibility of seeing um animals that don't encounter humans very often is is you know the huge possibility and the huge draw for heading there okay so that the fact that you say that they don't encounter humans very often, does it mean that that's not so popular thing for people to go to? Yeah, that's right. As I say, they're just kind of, I mean, it was set up to protect the wildlife firstly, and now they're realizing if oh. we get the tourists in, we can, you know, support the populations of animals that do live there. Um, so it's still very much starting out um and as i say it's it's in the far north of sierra leone so really the only reason you'd be heading in that direction is to go to this national park i see i see okay okay interesting so my next question is um a very keen on i mean i'm, I'm really curious about the next question and that, that is what did you eat for whole five months <laughs> well being on the atlantic ocean pretty much Every family has got a fisherman um, and they're living through fishing. So I just had fantastic sort of grilled and barbecued fish most of my time there. Um, everything, literally everything. So uh, barracuda, grouper, snapper. It's probably one of the cheapest places in the world you can have lobster. Um, oh. So it, the seafood there is just incredible. And then that tends to be served up with either with plain rice or with rice with a sauce or with a sort of deep fried plantain some sort of carbohydrate that's going to fill you up after you've had all of that tasty fish okay you know that, that's very interesting because when i when i was going to uganda they told me that they need to have some sort of vaccine or vaccination or whatever whatever it was and then when i went there they told me so don't drink tap water and careful what you eat then when I arrived, they came to pick me from the airport and on the way back, they say, okay, let's stop and eat. And they stopped at a street market, like a street joint or something. Uh -huh. And they were like, are you hungry? And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> and they started laughing. There was a driver and the guy who was uh, with me. They started laughing. He's like, he's scared. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what they're eating here. What's happening? So basically they there are a lot of places over there when you have just stoves on the street and they're just grilling stuff, well, stuff, meat. They're grilling meat on the spot sure. and they just stop and take meat on a stick. And that's mm -hmm. their 
snack slash meal. So is it is it the same in Sierra Leone? I mean, we didn't have that much fish over there, but you know. So you can definitely get the same um, kind of barbecue kind of stalls, very impromptu places like in Freetown, um, sort of like thin strips of beef with onion barbecued or or sort of KFC style chicken you can get as well. Um, and obviously, the further away you go from the coast, the more likely it is that you're having sort of chicken and that kind of stuff rather than fish because they mm-hmm. don't transport it because there's no way of preserving it. Um, and I guess the secret, because if you read the guidebook, you wouldn't eat anything. Um, yeah. But the secret, <laughs> I guess, really is well making sitting. sure it's um, making sure it's freshly cooked. So, you know, those uh-huh. guys are grilling it right in front of your face. Uh-huh. You know, it's hot. You know, it's freshly prepared. So it's probably going to be yeah. all right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, to be fair, when we stopped for the very first time, when we stopped, it was night. They stopped on the other side of the road. And I just see, you know, a few people over there doing something. And I was very surprised. Sure, yeah. But yeah, it was all good. Um, but the, what is the, is there any national dish that, you know, except this grilling thing, is, do they do something specific? Hmm, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I'm sure there is one. But um, one that springs to mind is a dish called Krin Krin which is um, the nearest, it's basically a leaf stew. Uh, So the nearest thing you can compare it to is probably uh, spinach. Mm. Um, And they basically, they chop it up really, really fine. So you get this green kind of stew and it's mixed with palm oil and spices and chili because everything in Sierra Leone has plenty of chili in it. Um, And it's, doesn't sound like very much but it's actually incredible to taste it it's really moorish and you get these massive bowls of it um, for really very little money so that can keep you going and it's a great thing to eat if you're uh, a vegetarian and you don't eat meat or fish well that's that's very interesting because looking at it it looks disgusting <laughs> but, but <laughs> i assure the... <laughs> you it tastes really good so ignore how it looks and just yeah. stick your spoon in and try it <laughs> The way you describe it is, I mean, I think it's one of those things that it looks awful, but then when you have a small sip, like, hmm, you know what, actually, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Okay, is there any traditional drink that they're having over there? Oh, I guess it's um, palm wine or palm spirit, which palm they have wine? quite a few places in in. Africa so they basically um, tap off the the palm trees so the the sap from the palm tree gets collected in generally a really dirty plastic container and that's lightly <laughs> fermented and you get this sort of milky colored slightly lumpy nutty flavored uh, alcoholic drink it's not going to knock you over it's not really strong you'd have to drink liters and liters of it before you got off your face or anything but that's kind of what people would drink uh traditionally before you know the advent of bottled beers and and that kind of thing uh-huh well that i mean i don't know that that sounds interesting to me uh, because interesting is the word for it i think <laughs> it's not my favorite drink no? but it's definitely <laughs> worth trying why is that your favorite it's just a little bit strange. I think yeah, it's one of those things where you have to grow up with it to truly understand um, it. And if you come from it from abroad, it just kind of doesn't really make sense. Okay. So uh, when we got there, would you say we should stay at Freetown and then just travel around it? So mainly we can land in Freetown and stay there and then travel a day trip, go back, travel a day trip. Is that, is that what you recommend? So, yeah, mostly you could definitely base yourself in Freetown. Some of the places, um, as I say, so Kent, which is the gateway to the Banana Islands, is at the opposite end of the Freetown Peninsula, and that's just two hours away. So that gives you an indication of distances. Um, But if you're going maybe to uh, Bunce Island, which is uh, connected to the transatlantic slave trade, that's another tricky place to get to. So you're going to want to stay the night somewhere nearby and then maybe head back uh, to Freetown okay okay um i think well we covered a lot can you just repeat what you said at the beginning about freetown and the slavery how is it connected because i I couldn't understand it very well and i just want to make and make sure i understand it 
Sure. So Freetown was um, created as uh, a base for freed slaves. So when the British decided that slavery was no longer a good idea, they turned their attention to, to rescuing slaves that were sailing across the Atlantic from other countries. Um, and they returned them to Africa. But oh, instead wow. of returning them to where they came from, they just kind of returned them to Sierra Leone and Liberia. Um, so that's why Freetown is called Freetown, because it was the town of the free. That's oh. why Liberia has the name Liberia, because it was for freed slaves. Oh, because what I know, you know, it was for, for centuries, that's where, you know, somewhere, probably from Gabon or, I mean, from the west part of Africa, slaves were transported to USA. Yeah. So basically yeah, they were much, bringing them back after that. Pretty much from Sierra Leone right the way around to Gabon, there were various ports um, when they were t basically taking human beings, buying them and shipping them across the Atlantic to the United States, mm. to the Caribbean and to Brazil to work on the, the various plantations of tobacco and cotton and sugar that are in that part yeah. of the world. And then they decided, okay, let's bring them all the way back. But then they just dropped like, them in Sierra Leone and like, okay, on your way. Not necessarily bringing those back that were already in, in America, but um, other countries in Europe were still taking slaves across the Atlantic when, when the British had given up. So they were basically, the British were basically raiding the slave trips that were crossing the Atlantic and taking the slaves back with with the idea that they were freeing them um by returning them to sierra leone oh wow wow that, that's interesting okay um well that was really insightful is there anything that we missed you think but is worth mentioning about sierra leone i think the important thing to say is that you shouldn't base your your opinions of Sierra Leone from seeing uh, news stories, whether that's from the civil war in the 1990s to the Ebola outbreak, which ended in 2016, so just before I arrived for my second trip, because that's going to give you the idea that it's a desperate and horrid place that you're never going to want to go to. So grab a, a guidebook. There is a a guidebook to Sierra Leone. Just check out pictures on on Google, and you can see this amazing tropical paradise, um, which has got everything to make it this fantastic um, holiday destination. If you there is a little bit of effort involved, it's not like heading to Jamaica or somewhere, <laughs> but the the rewards you get from doing that will stay with you for for much much longer. I think. Yeah, you mentioned the civil war, which straight away reminded me, and together with the name of the country, it reminded me of Blood Diamond, which is a great movie with yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. It's about Sierra Leone. Um, well, great. And I agree with you. And it's not just about Sierra Leone. We, we, I think people listen to the media way too much and they're, you know, projecting countries, regions, cities as very bad, you know, don't go there. But then when you go there, it's like, hey, welcome to my place. And I'm like, so just be open-minded and explore it for yourself. Great. Ian, thanks so exactly, much. Yeah. It was a great pleasure. I learned a lot. I'm sure our listeners as well. Um, and yeah, thanks so much. Uh, we're going to link you. You have articles about Sierra Leone, right? And pictures. Yeah, so uh, I best the guest place to head would be my site, which is encircleafrica.org. Um, and I've got basically everything I've ever written on there about anywhere in Africa uh, and lots of guides I, I'm slowly writing, making my way around the continent. So, yeah. so you know what to do when you get to these destinations that are, are slightly more unusual. Excellent. We'll link all that in the description. Perfect. Well, thanks so much, Ian. I wish you a fantastic day and another trip to Sierra Leone very soon.